Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here with the Fastlane car and behind me, the 2017 Lexus NX 300H. Yes, it is a hybrid and it's a crossover and we're gonna take it up Goldmine Hill. Why? Well, among other reasons, this has a very unique all-wheel drive system with an electric motor powering the rear wheels. And coming up next, we're going to test it up the hill. Folks, this is a very interesting power plant because it is the Lexus Hybrid Drive. That is a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine and assisting it, combined power, electric motor with it makes 194 horsepower. Now this vehicle is capable of getting combined 31 MPG, but it's not just a front wheel drive car. There is no drive shaft that leads to the rear. No, there is an electric motor that powers the rear wheels when necessary. So primarily front wheel drive and then when there's slippage, the electric motor fires up and makes the rear wheels go. It's hooked up to an eCVT, an electronically controlled continuously variable transmission. And the whole package is standard with the hybrid. In other words, you can't get a front wheel drive only hybrid. There are no off-road buttons. There's no setting whatsoever for dirt or rock or snow. It's all automatic. I can see that the electric motor in the back is working. So the rear wheels are being turned by electricity. Car's not struggling, it's actually doing really well. No problems. This is where the, uh, <laughs> this will be interesting now. The exterior is kind of interesting, but let's go over the technical stuff first. First of all, the approach angle is surprisingly good at 28.7 degrees. Also, its ground clearance is okay at 6.9 inches. And if you notice the wheels and tires, that package is 18 inch wheels with Michelin rubber surrounding it. They're supposed to be mud and snow, but they really do look like they're a little bit happier on the street. And on the street, actually the overall handling is pretty good. Now in terms of the rear end, well that's a 24 degree departure angle. Once again, not bad, especially for a crossover. Especially for a crossover that's a cousin to the Toyota RAV4. Now the overall design I've always felt was very attractive, except for the grill. The grill is a little bit like in your face. The name of this color, which I call brown, with a little bit of flake in it, is known as Autumn Shimmer. Autumn Shimmer. No kidding, that's what it says right here. This obstacle may not look that difficult on camera, but it's probably close to three feet uh, in terms of a trench on one side and then how high it is on the other, about a three foot difference. And because it turns, that really challenges cars. Here we go. Didn't like that one bit, did it? Let me try two foot. Oh, no bueno. It doesn't like that at all. The main issue is that the tires are just not getting any traction and they're not really doing well with the, uh, the dirt road to begin with. This tree here. All right, it says traction control has been turned off. Let's try it again. I'm going in with a little tiny bit of speed. No bueno. I can feel, feel the rear wheels turning, so it is doing what it's supposed to do. But once you lift up the right rear wheel, which you can see, and the left front, there's just not enough grip. Okay, Andre, I'm gonna back down about two more feet, then I'll try it again. Now this vehicle competes with pretty much every other brand out there that's luxury to a certain degree. In other words, Acura, Infiniti, Cadillac, Mercedes, Benz, BMW, they all have something that sort of competes with this, but at the same time, 
being that this is a hybrid, it's sort of in a league of its own in terms of pricing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it starts at a uh, fairly reasonable $39,720. But then you add on options. And the as-tested price with this vehicle is $50,433. Yep, over 50 grand. That's a lot of dough. And the reason why is because one of the options, the luxury package, is $4,545. Now granted, it gives you a different tire and wheel package, all other interior with a 10-way adjustable driver's seat, and all the bells and whistles, but it's a lot of money. And then you add a couple options on top of that, and suddenly you're over $50,000. Okay, a little bit of a run up this time. Traction control shut off. I really haven't noticed much of a difference, although I think it did do a little bit more wheel spin. So we have a little tiny bit of speed. Ha ha! Woo! Okay. So it worked. It didn't work well, and I cannot fault the traction control system because it was pushing all the wheels. The issue was the tires simply didn't have enough grip. These tires work fairly well on the street, but they are not great on dirt. So that is something to keep in mind in case you want to go exploring dirt trails in a hybrid. A little bit of momentum went a long way. Are we doing third stage? Want to give it a try? No. <laughs> So why do we do this type of thing? Why do we take these crossovers up Goldmine Hill? It's not just for fun, although it is a lot of fun. We want to see how the vehicle will perform, both tires and traction control, its breakover angle, how high it is, everything else. And that really does work on this trail. Now, fortunately, we didn't scrape anywhere, so height was good, approach angle was great. The vehicle did have some issues, and primarily because it just didn't want to grip where the tires were sitting. Remember, this is not an off-road vehicle, not even close. This is basically a vehicle that you would take up to a ski slope. But because it was able to make the last obstacle, at least it shows with traction control off and you're really aggressive with the acceleration, it can make it over moderately difficult obstacles. For the Fastlane Car, this is Nathan Adler. Don't forget to go to tflcar.com for news, views, real world reviews, and of course, more Goldmine Hill. Just a quick note at this moment, I am only using battery power, electric power, to go over some small obstacles. It's uncanny, it's strange. And then when I have to accelerate over this little part, oh, there goes the motor. Sorry, the gas engine. So for a while there, yep, I'm back down to not using any gas at all. Just going over obstacles using electricity. It's the future! <laughs>